Hello, um, my name is Angela, and I have a testimony that I think that the Lord wants me um, to get out there. I've never done an interview before, so bear with me on that. But um, I'm going to give a little bit of background. As I was a child, um, young child, my parents and I, um, the only time we went to church is on Easter that I remember. We went on Easter and the times I would spend with my grandmother on the weekends, um, I would walk to the church that we went to on Easter. So I didn't go very often. And I think even back then I fell through the cracks because I'd go to church and no one would know who I was. I was about eight to ten years old and they just assumed I was someone's child that was at church. And so Anyway, I just wanted to give a little bit of background. I didn't know to be saved back then. I, I didn't know. Um, teenager years came by. Um, we, we pretty much had a dysfunctional family. Um, my parents divorced when I was 12. And I, I ended up marrying young. I married young and um, was promised a wonderful, happy life. And um, had had one son. And my husband... I didn't know at the time since I married young and I married quickly within two months. Um, he, uh, 11 years later, um, committed suicide. And um, so anyway, it left me and my son alone. And I said, well, with all these things, uh, wasn't a good marriage. And uh, I wanted it to be, but it wasn't. And so uh, 16 years, I remained unmarried. I dated a few people and I, I was a weekend drinker. I worked through the week. I was a nurse and um, I, I, I partied on the weekends with my friends and and um, I, I guess did the normal things. I wasn't around Christian people. I didn't at that time still didn't know to be saved. I had heard about God and Jesus, of course, because we know the stories of, you know, when he was born and stuff. But um, 16 years went by and I met my current husband now. And we've been married 16 years now. So uh, I'm going to start uh, in 2019. My uh, first little dog that I ever owned died. And um, it hurt me so bad because I. My, my son never had time for me, and uh, he was, I guess, my little child. You know, he loved me so much, and when he died, it broke my heart worse than anything I can have ever went through that I thought, and uh, a couple of other things um, went on during this time. The fall of 2019, uh, two family members, very close family members, uh, had me at my wit's end. And I was so broken uh, because I thought there's no way out. You know, there's no way out. Well, I was so broken that um, I prayed to God. And I don't remember ever doing that in my life. And no one ever told me to. But I was so broken. I thought I'm going to. I prayed to God, you know, to help me because I can't get through this. And so. This carried over into January of 2020, you know, and uh, then March came of 2020. Um, I was having a dream and all of a sudden the dream changed. It changed to a vision dream and I was in a dark, dark woods a darkest dark that I've ever seen in my life and I know that sounds weird but it was the blackest black I've ever seen me and my husband were in it he was in front of me and he was running we were running with all our might and trying to get away from what was behind us and I could see from the side of my face that it was a creature and it was black and it was huge and it and it was running behind us. It was big as a two-story house, maybe bigger. It had claws. It had teeth. It was dripping out of its mouth. Mind you, I don't watch scary movies. I don't dream this kind of stuff. 
and I was in this dream. I was in it and I could feel me running. But anyway, um, we were running from this thing and it was after us trying to kill us. And there was a house up ahead and I could see maybe it was a white house, but it had a door like a Thomas Kincaid door. You could see the light through the top of the door real bright light and i told my husband i said run run to that light run to the light so we ran and we got in the door and soon as we got in the door we shut the door and i turned against the wall and i could barely catch my breath and my husband said we're okay and i said no we are not okay i knew that and so immediately this is going to sound weird but it's going to make sense in a little bit my head exploded and when it did i woke up in a heart rate just out of this world i couldn't even hardly breathe heart rate and i felt for my husband he was there in the bed I acclimated my eyes to the light of the bedroom we have a light on in the living room for the little our little dogs that we have and and my eyes acclimated I could see the curtains in the walls and I tried to catch my breath all of a sudden I heard something come from the bathroom and it walked with heavy heavy feet I couldn't see it and it walked to the end of the bed and I went huh I said something I don't know what I said to it I can't remember but I knew I had to leave because it was after me. I knew that. So I got up and I started to run in the in the in the living room and I heard a voice tell me our time is short. Go and find out how to be saved. And I ran to the living room and I turned on my landline computer and I was typing it in how to be saved. How to be saved how do i be saved i was typing it in and i was reading it and reading it how do i be saved what does this mean how do what and so i read what it said to do and then i started repenting i repented everything that i'd ever done even from stealing a piece of bubble gum when i was little i repented and all of a sudden i felt a heavy sack of bricks fall off of my left shoulder onto the floor and I turned quickly and I said wow something just fell off of me and I knew what it was it was my sin my sin had left me and the Lord took it away he took my sin away and in the middle of the night I prayed and cried and thanked the Lord and I text I don't know who all I text but I said the Lord's coming soon he is real please get saved now and repent of all your sins and so i had been on fire on fire no matter what i did i i i know i i, I made everybody crazy around me because i'm i was just telling everybody the lord's coming and i don't know how soon so i i, I kept praying and I, I joined this little white church down the road and and um I, I kept praying for the for uh lord you know what does this mean with my head exploding you know what does it mean and sometime down the road i don't know uh could have been three or four months i'm not sure um how the time frame but i was hurting really bad one night and i kept rolling over in bed and i said my pain was excruciating and so i had to get up i went okay i'm gonna get up i have to get up so i go and i get my phone and i go in the living room and normally if I'm doing that I'll sit down and I will um, pray to the Lord and give thanks to the Lord and all these things and I looked at my phone and the first thing I saw I scrolled up and I saw this woman on there and it and I thought hmm something made me say well watch her so this woman was about mid-60s maybe and she said I don't know who needs to hear this but uh and i've never done a video on youtube or anywhere about this and she said i don't know who needs to hear this but 20 years ago i had a dream and it was a vision dream and i thought wow that's what i said about mine that was interesting so anyway she uh, kept going and she said me and my daughter 
were in a dark, dark woods, a darkest night that I've ever seen. I've never seen such a blackness. And we were running and she was running ahead of me. And I thought, huh, wow. So I'm really getting intrigued now. So, you know, sounds a lot like mine. And, uh, and she said, we were running and she said, there were monsters behind us, big black things with nails and they were shooting at us with M16s, long guns. And so she said, they were all in the woods running. And she said, she looked ahead and she saw an open pavilion with a light on, a really bright light. And she told her daughter, run to the light, run to that light. And so she, the mother hid behind something and the daughter stood out there and didn't get hit in time. So all of a sudden her head exploded. And so the woman wakes up the next morning. She says, Lord, why did you give me this dream? I don't want my daughter to die. Why would she die this way? What does this mean? And so she went to church on Sunday. And it, she, she said it just bothered her all week. And she prayed about it. Well, she went to the altar and she got on her knees and she said, Lord, what does this mean? What do you want me to do with this? And she said she got a word that said, our time is short. Go and tell everyone your vision dream, your testimony. Tell everyone. And so I got my confirmation through her, which was amazing. And I just cried and cried and cried because it was like, you can't make this up. You know, this is real. And so um, I, in 2021, um, May, I think, of 2021, me and my husband got sick with a virus, really sick, really sick, and it took us 20 to 30 days before we could leave the house. We were so sick, and I am disabled, and I think that's why it attacked me so hard. It attacked my joints and everything. I mean, I was, I was ready to die. I told the Lord I was so sick, but I did get better. I got better, and uh, better enough but um, I started watching all these videos, you know, people were putting out about this and that, about, you know, viruses and such. And fear came over me that I've never had. I had a fear come over me that was so dark. And my heart rate was beating erratically. Uh, the normal is 60 to 90 beats per minute at rest. And mine felt like it was two to 300 beats per minute. And anxiety, I've never had anxiety like this. And my family was getting worried about me. This happened, I don't know, two or three uh, weeks, I guess, of it. And it just kept getting worse and worse. And people were worried. And I was worried because I was praying. And, and, and this was still going on with me. I was losing weight. And I thought, wow, you know, just this, all these things are happening. And I had a severe pain in my, in my abdomen. Well, one, one evening I came in my prayer closet and I had a feeling that I'm going to die tonight. I thought, this, this is so bad. My heart can't take it. My heart can't take this. And my, and my body can't take this. It's too bad. It can't take it anymore. And so I fell to my knees. My decrepit knees are so bad. I fell to my knees and I lifted my arms up to God and I said, Lord, Lord, you know what this is, why this is happening to me. And I don't know why this is happening to me, but I said, Lord, you know, I can't go to the doctor. The doctor's going to think I'm like crazy or something. This is spiritual. And I, I felt that I felt that it was spiritual because I've never had anything like this before. And so. I said, please, Lord, I'm ready to go home. I've repented. I love you. I'm ready to go home. But Lord, if it's not my time, please heal me of this. It is so horrible. And soon as I said that in my right ear, I heard a male voice as clear as day. It said, you might as well kill yourself. And I felt, oh, as no one can help you. And I stopped in my tracks. I couldn't breathe. I know I had my mouth open. I thought, what did I just hear? I heard that. 
I heard that. My God would never tell me to commit suicide or hurt myself. He would never. And I would never do that. I've talked people out of that. I would never even think such a thing. And I knew it was the voice of either Satan or his demon. I knew. I knew that I knew. And so I, I started praying more and more that night. The next day came. The next morning came. And... I still had the same symptoms and I still prayed and through that night and I thought well I'm still alive I, I haven't died so the next morning came and when I woke up my heart rate was back to normal my panic attacks had left me the pain in my stomach was gone and I had a peace beyond all understanding and joy. And I praised the Lord. I said, Lord, you healed me. You healed me. You healed me. And I'll never forget it. Never. I'll tell anyone who will listen. I'll tell anyone who will listen. And I have doing I have been doing that. I have anywhere I go. I'll tell people you have to have faith. He was waiting on my faith to not go to a doctor and not have faith in man. He waited on me to give everything to him. And so I did that and he healed me. So I have peace and joy from that that you can't get anywhere else. No one can help you with that but God. And so the next year in 2022, I was getting ready to go to this little white church. It was Sunday. And I, I was learning a little bit about feasts. I didn't know anything about them. And I knew this day was, it said on my calendar, this is Day of Atonement. And I knew a little bit about it. And I was really happy and joyful. And I, I was sitting down and I brushed my hair and I had to dry my hair. So I've got this really powerful blow dryer. And I was so happy, you know, I was rejoicing. And I always listened to sermons and positive music and I was drying my hair and all of a sudden in the middle of drying my hair I heard a voice in my right ear I heard a male voice and it said keep the faith and I went huh I just heard that I heard keep the faith keep the faith I looked to my left to the doorway there was no one there no one was in the bathroom with me I cut my blow dryer off and I knew that it was no one in the house talking to me. I knew whose voice it was. Even though I ran to the living room and I asked my husband, which was in a motorized recliner that takes forever to get in it and out of it. I said, did you just come and talk to me in the doorway of the bathroom? He said, no, I've been here the whole time. And I said, I just heard Jesus tell me to keep the faith. I just heard him tell me that. And I thought, there's something coming, maybe even worse than what I've been through for sure, that I'm going to have to remember that, that he told me, keep the faith. And I thought, Lord, I have faith beyond all anything I can think of. But I thought for him to tell me that and me to hear those words, there's something worse coming. And I'm going to need to know that. So I guess one thing I would like to say to anyone that is listening. Even when you are saved and you're a Christian, you are obeying, you are doing all the commandments, you are learning the feast days, you are helping others and spreading the word of the Lord and salvation, even though we are going to go through trials and tribulations. I know this, so it's not 
that we are going to go through them. It's how we go through them and how we face them. So my, I guess my word to you is keep the faith in the Lord at all times. Don't rely on any man. Don't rely on God because he's what got me through it. Look what all Jesus went through for us. Look what they put him through. So we're going to have to go through some things, but just remember and do that. And if you're not saved, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus and that you haven't accepted him with your mouth and in your heart, you need to do it as soon as possible because you may not wake up tomorrow. And if you don't make that choice yourself, you have made the choice. You just don't know it. You won't go to the good place because a choice will be made for you. So make the choice now because it's awesome. You're not giving up anything. If anything, you're getting more. People don't understand that. You're really not giving up anything. You're getting more. You're getting more friends and you're getting more love and peace and joy and helping others and, and, and teaching others and learning more and learning the Bible and staying in his word. You, I mean, you can't know too much. I never can learn enough fast enough. It's in my heart, in my mind, in my head. And I will never forget what the Lord has done for me. So if you want to know more, go to JesusDoers.com. And it will tell you everything you need to know. You can see the lessons on there. They're wonderful. They're wonderful. And you, you will learn how to read the Bible. God's word. You will learn it. You will. And so. I'm sorry if I got emotional or I'm so I get too elated when I think about all the things that the Lord's done for me and I get happy and excited and I'm happy and excited for you too because I know once you do this once you have a relationship and abide in the Lord that you will too you will never give up hope keep the faith thank you and God bless you all Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. I pray for you all to be saved and repent. For God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit love you. He loves you with all his heart. Never forget that in any choice that you have to make. So make the right choice. Thank you. And good night. Bye-bye.